This is my pleasure to address all my budding lawyers, those who are already into practice or those who are aspire to become advocates. First of all, I hope and I pray that all of you are in a good health amidst this COVID-19 situation and staying safe. Now, to begin with, I will just, I'm fortunate to take this session on how to set up a law practice and go into a global so by profession, I'm a chartered accountant and from a legal background as well. I founded my firm called Water and Shark in the year 2012 when I was just 19 years old, like my other fellow brothers and sisters. When I was in Commerce Graduate College, I had a vision or inclination towards setting up a something which footprint sets on a global platform, not just on a localized, you know, Bombay or Delhi or something. How we do that? Definitely it's a challenging situation, but if one needs to have a vision, then definitely they can try to implement it in a way that he can do so. So we set up a practice, global practice, with the aim aspiring to be a global chartered accountant and legal firm, headquartered in USA, and now it has spreaded wings in last seven years in seven countries. So many accolades and different veracity of practices in our hand and dynamic young professional partners with the having cross-border operation. That is what our unique skill set to empower a young more and more professionals to come forward and to practice this novel practice. So this seems to be a lot of difficulties in a say how we can do so, you know, when, when challenges or situations comes into mind, like when we are undergoing BS LLB or BCom LLB advocate curriculum during time, what should I do? whether to go ahead with my you know, routine, corporate or litigation service as a job as after becoming advocate or to set up a law firm. So there is nothing that I am promoting or something called, you know, I'm, we are with uh, setting up our own practice, visa or service, you know, are doing a job. Both are equal, but there are several myths and challenges that we, we all see while setting up such practices. We need to understand there are more, more, much more than we can do towards that. If we such elaborate such kind of you know situations in hand and assess how we can grow it together. So first and foremost, once you become an advocate, definitely this is just a gateway to your professional jervis. Having a degree doesn't mean that you will be getting any you know, clients or your jobs on a platter, right? Even if it is a job then you need to reach out to advocate firms or law firms or corporate and you know, while having your resumes, CVs, and you need to approach all this. You need to prepare for your interview and you need to appear. So your work starts from here. Professional journey begins as soon as you complete your academic. Real world starts. Though world accepts you because you have a creditability, a degree which has a wider acceptability and which is a backbone of our Indian judicial systems, law, law, practice. So now when, when young chartered accountant or young lawyer, per se a lawyer per specific, when you pass out of a, you know, as a BS LLB or a BA LLB, and you are thinking whether which area to go, whether to practice, set up a own firm, or to work under some big law firms or to take the experience and then to set up. So I'll guide you through a basic, basic understanding of how, what are the, should be the steps and what one should take care of it in order to uh, create the foundations of uh, your law firm, successful foundation. This is all based on our experience, what we have encountered as compared to what our other peers are doing in the market. So first and most important principle that uh, I always recommend and recollect, most important thing is, have a vision in mind, roadmap clear in mind. It cannot be in this way that you know, I, I want to set up my law firm, but whatever comes that I want to do it, it cannot be. There has to be some vision unless and until you know where you want to go, which road you want to go, you will never able to achieve your target or never able to commit your destiny. So first and most important, have your objective your vision in place, what firm you want to set up, what you want to aspire as a law firm person. It could be anything, you know, 
like you know specialize in a commercial contract specialize in criminal litigation or a corporate lawyer or a tax expert tax litigation it could be anything based on your own liking and passion and skill set or what you are based on your study in your during your academic or during internship right but one is to be very sure that jack of all master of none doesn't work in a professional practice unless you have a platform wherein all the partners are skills of it first and foremost important is the key take away is i'm urging all to have a vision in place have a road map though you are starting starting with a zero you don't have anything as of now and when i'm starting as a new advocate in practice i don't have any background that doesn't mean that i'm stopping you from my going to a vision so my vision is i want to be aspire to be a big corp lawyer assumption so what should i do analyze the what big corporate law firms in india or in foreign does it. how they are structured so second after vision comes structure so structuring was say you all are very well all are well aware of the fact than more than me than structuring a law firm in india is nothing but operating under sole proprietorship partnership and limited liability partnership all the three structures are recognized by law bar council of india and very well you can practice as a advocate and solicitor where appropriate so it depends on a case to case which structure to go if you think so yes i want to keep my identity i want to go like solely then definitely sole proprietor is a good option for you but sole proprietor comes with a lot of restrictions lot of cons like unlimited liability you are prone to lot of liabilities because it's a proprietorship concern is unlimited liability but it offers a ample of you know gambit of flexibility wherein you don't need to share your profits or you know your structure with somebody else whatever you want it belongs to you tax efficiency is also there sole proprietorship so in india we all can see the majority of the law firm especially the small and medium law, law firm practitioners they belong to this category so uh, sole proprietorship then comes a partnership firm so if you have a partner or colleague or colleagues who is expertise in some other field you are expertise in some other field and you are seeing instead of going in a sole proprietorship in a individualistic let's join hands and build a common firm name so that we can have a better reach to and it helps to have a specialization of uh, partners in your team. that is one aspect but partnership firm again comes with a liability that is unlimited liability concept so one level above the partnership firm is a llp so it's a unique structure it's a combination of a partnership firm as well as the limited liability concept mixture offers you a llp that is a tax efficient structures and at the same time you all are secured against the liability of any act committed by your counterpart right so you are responsible hold responsible only for the act which are committed by you right and this to an extent it covers into the llp act exception so this is broad about structures the form of structures which are available under the indian constitution and the bar council practice sole proprietorship partnership or llp but this requires a careful analysis of a vision and mission what you want to set your form for your form could be like i want i aspire to be i want to be the best law firm in india this cannot be a mere simple one liner vision it has to be like this what i can offer so that i can stand out from the crowd different than other my peers or other law firms are offering right so how you can become the best for becoming the best you need to have a first skill set com uh, competitiveness then your resource and infrastructure should be in place when all the things are in a line then only you can say yes you are in you are able to services which are provided by akin in nature by other competitor firms right definitely it takes years of time to build a structure but the foundation when it is strong then definitely the slowly steady way you will lead us ladder of success so just take a example why the foundation is important and why we put so much stress on that a builder or real estate developer thought i want to develop a story of a 25 floor okay 
His architect and the engineers had constructed, started constructing a drawing plans based on just 15 story floor, 15 story building, right? So can builder construct the additional 10 floors even though he is eligible under the rules and regulations of state? Answer is no, because the foundations on which the entire the building structure is designed and is built is capable to take the load of only till the 15th floor. Though it can be extendable to an extent, but the additional 10 floor it can't be done, right? So what we can understand from this is careful planning is most important to and I assess the situations and analyze where I want to be, where I aspire to be. Often this such type of questions have been asked in interview, right? By HR manager. Uh, when, when we go for any job interview, where do you see yourself after 10 years or five years, right? So why don't we ask this question to ourselves when we start a practice you know, as a law firm? So where do I want to see myself after 10 years or 15 years of my practice? That helps you to jot down your goals in a, on a yearly basis, on a three years basis, and then slowly, slowly, you can track whether your working progress is in alignment of your what your vision is, or there are any chances of correction is required. Right? So foremost important is a vision. You need to have first vision in place, what you want to do and what you aspire to be. Yes, I want to be the best corporate lawyer. How I will do it? That's the second aspect. Have a vision in place, a good structure decision, sole proprietorship, partnership, and NLP. Now, there are a couple of most important things when we start a practice, apart from the broad structuring and all that, that uh, lawyers are better aware of than anyone else. Important is to inbuild the entrepreneur skill. We often recall like a professional practice of a doctors or lawyers or chartered accountants as a practice of profession. We don't call it them as an entrepreneur, right? Entrepreneur is different though we are into a business but we are guided by professional ethics and for the regulating the professional we should abide by such boundaries so that's called the professional practice but the important aspect is one cannot neglect the entrepreneurship inbuilt nature in the professional practice if you are not charging your client and you have a cost pile up and your debt pile up how are you going to pay your debt how are you going to survive day to day your cost operation and all that? Right? So, yes, revenue model, cash flow, just like typically it is important for our entrepreneurs also, industry also, to carefully plan so that they can have the businesses smoothly. Similar way, these are also a vital part of a professional practice, be it a lawyer, be it a doctor, any other profession. So, we need to Understand one thing, while setting up this law firm, we need to understand the commercial aspect of this. How much it going to cost? How do I recover this revenue? And what will be the, my final surplus or the profit element out of this? Right? Definitely initial year, initial years, I can say three to four years will be a difficult time for any new, new law practitioners. But if you have careful planning, then I'm sure you will be able to your break even your cost or capital expenditure whatever you are interested in your setting up your firm is able to recover in a short span of time but unless and until you have your cost in your noted down in your paper and your revenue means of achieving that revenue and then you will not able to analyze the where you are landing right so after structuring the important comes the entrepreneur spirit the entrepreneur spirit is taking risk averse decision so in during professional practice there might be some scenarios or situations where as a professional or our conscious says no i don't know about this law i should not take up this assignment or i'm a little skeptical whether you know i will be able to deliver or not but that time our inner entrepreneur skill set instructs us no i have a skill set i have a bandwidth let me try this let me and let me try to give this justice to the, this case in my hand. So if you take up such kind of challenges, then definitely the, you create the challenges into opportunity and such opportunity leads the way for your firm. So 
be it any form, any top Indian 20 firms, if you see now, they also have started from somewhere you know, right from zero, right from with one partner or one employee. And then they are, you are seeing them at a level where they are having a 2000 advocates as a employees or a strength, but they also have started somewhere from beginning, right? So how you grow it is a vision, structure, entrepreneur spirit, they also must have encountered such kind of situation wherein they have taken some risk averse decisions, which, you know, tapping of any new opportunities, which landed up in having new avenues for them and which resulted into a good benefit. Definitely it could result into a reverse side also. But we learn from our mistake, mistakes, right? But we, if we repeat our mistakes, then it is our biggest mistakes. So biggest learning is our making mistakes. Somebody tells, I have never done any mistake. That means he has never learned anything out of the, how to come out of the situations, right? Don't fear of failing that if I start practice, then after a few years, if I don't be able to get the clients, enough number of clients, then what if I am again going back to the corporate, will they be going to accept me or not? Don't have a, such kind of mindset, negativity. Go with the optimistic future, positivity in mind, and when you have your positive attitude towards your what you do and with the necessity skill set and your all the resources are in a line, definitely result will be a, in your favor. It might take time, but definitely it will come to you in a bigger fame and success. So this is important to understand why the structure is important. So many of you must be saying that initial setting up, it doesn't make sense, you know, whether I go for a sole proprietor or LLP why it is so important. So let me take a one practical example why it is so important. So when you start with the sole proprietorship and you create a one banner XYZ and associates or XYZ law chamber and then after a period of five years or seven years you have created your visibility and the brand positioning in the eyes of your potential clients and the industry market as an expertise in corporate law or be anything in taxation law or criminal law what happens is after over a period of time you need diversification right so now if you are functioning in a real estate practice market may be a sluggish then unless you have some other kind of revenue such kind of practice will have a lot of burden of cost is to cater right so to avoid such kind of things you need to have different umbrella of practice in a, your form because all the practices hand in go right? so you need to have different versatile partners of a respective fields if you are from criminal practice background somebody needs to be versatile with a divorce a human interest litigation public interest litigation something like that civil matters taxation arbitration so that helps you to diversify your businesses and the risk so if it is a LLP, if it is a partnership firm, then anytime you come across any such opportunities of tapping up any with any partners, you can easily add, add them into your firm. If it's a proprietorship, then it becomes difficult. Two proprietorship requires to have a merger. So you, these guys lose out their identity, right? It takes over years and years and decades to create your identity, but it just takes a couple of minutes to just, you know, vanish the entire your, your hard work of your years of marketing and all the positioning PR what you have done right so what we understand from such example is structuring is most important proper structure and proper documentation is important we have often seen we, we do our utmost care while advising our client for structuring but for our own self we don't give much time of it you know hamara hai na it, uh, he is my friend and we are doing partnership in a law firm together. Let it be just prepare a normal deal and no, it's not going to work in this way. If you aspire to be the best of the Indian law firm, you need to make sure your foundation, your structure, your documentation has to be built on the fundamental principles and in the best possible way, whatever best legally you can do. So have your documentation also in place in proper, though your partners might be your friend or colleague, but you need to have proper arrangement in place, which saves you from a lot of future repercussions or any legal cases, right? Structuring is important. 
be it a sole proprietorship partnership or llp whichever uh, structure you choose based on your own needs and requirements then it comes how do i start how do i start my practice you know when i just pass out from college or i just have my internship in hand 6 year 3 years or 1 years of experience of internship how do i start so yes that's a big challenge you set up everything and just you know sitting in a ideal office doesn't you know client is not going to approach you at your doorstep unless it is your well established firm or bank so you need to create that you need to bridge that gap and you need to work on it so that your client directly approaches to you over a period of time that is your goodwill and your positioning in the market so first and most important vision don't restrict your vision to in a confined to one particular boundary being a indian lawyer just like other profession chartered accountant and other and our global is open to you in today's area you know where the india is a global centric we call it as india as the largest fastest growing economy of the world as among the top 5 FDI, foreign direct investments and outward direct investments, both are happening at a at its highest ever peak. What does that mean? So, many of the global conglomerate either they are investing in India, setting up in India, or will be anything. Sorry, Indian enterprise or Indian investors are setting up in abroad, opening up their products or services in a foreign country. So here, definitely, the lawyer services required. so don't restrict your mindset with a vision that okay i am practicing in delhi i am practicing in gujarat bombay so my area of operation should be restricted to confined to this so technically yes if you are enrolled with a one state bar council you are eligible to practice and all definitely it takes years to uh, practice in a different country and the supreme court as well but nothing stops you to offer a paralegal services which are most important and the backbone of the legal practices like civil services civil contract drafting services arbitration tax planning tax advisory contract drafting international contract drafting business setups such kind of areas and avenues are always open for a lawyers operating in a planning for a cross border advisory services so keep in mind we are not going to confine our limit our vision should be our wing should be fly as big as our our country's dream all right so one thing is that we have to be keep our vision big yes i want to aspire to become the best of the best lawyer don't compete with a firm which are just you know having a small vision of 5 years or 10 years practice your vision could be yes i want to give a competition to the india's top 10 ca law firm how are you going to do that definitely will start get into a gap first and foremost important is which industry we are function we function as a knowledge intensive we our industry is not a capital intensive our industry is not a infrastructure intensive what it is it is knowledge intensive so first and foremost you need to demonstrate to the world to the industry to the clients potential look boss i am a new lawyer i have a expertise in the field that i am intend to practice If given a chance, you give me your case, or you give me appoint me for your documentation, you will be in a better off. So, how do you demonstrate that? We cannot do marketing, right? We are not in entrepreneurs. We cannot market ourselves as a uh, get documents drafting from us from so many rupees and so advantage of appointing us. No, we can't do that. We are abide by the bar council ethics. We are prohibited from doing so. How do we do that? Right amount of positioning. knowledge sharing content marketing content marketing is the most important for our practice positioning in the form market and the fifth one is important is that imaginary imaginary positions in the eyes of potential clients though you might operating as a one sole proprietor or a one lawyer with a small chamber office 200 square feet but this present setup don't let you down with your future ambitions right so the most important is content content marketing which we are focusing on in today's world is a technology driven practice needs to be there so immediately upon setting up your practice 
you need to have your well established your technology presence and the online presence is most important use of technology and the online presence both are important technology in terms of using in a, your day to day office functions right those were the days where advocates used to have enough files in the plethora of files in their office you know cases files and when the client approaches for asking any any related to the few years back case details they need to you know just rush it to all the files and the see the papers and they they get back to their clients now no no such things are you know required thanks to the technology and a lot of other cloud based softwares which are available so first and most important is use of innovative techniques and the cloud based services which you can integrate to your office infrastructure which will help to save your time and efficiency increase what is that a client relationship management you know when you set up a office definitely your client are going to approach you for advisory your chamber visit and your work so appointment making your clients interaction everything has to be routed through one technology platform so when it goes to a client they can easily make out even though he is a beginner but his methodology and doing the things work is so well integrated that it feels like i am working with you know any big partner of a big law firm right that's how you differentiate yourself from your your other peers so being a law new fresher new practitioner if you are implementing such kind of you know systems in place in your firm whereas the other young practitioners are not doing it don't you think this gives a positive image and the message to your client potential client do he is a new in the market but i have seen him doing the things in a little different way that's how you set up apart right from others so use of technology tools there are a lot of cloud based services providers are available which enables the advocate to help them to so collaborate and synergize their all the efforts and the resources in a one line and streamlines the services of a professional client it software can also have a documentation in place all related to case papers all related to research materials so you don't need to get into again and again for the same case in detail you can jot it down in your software note it down where you want to uh, see again when any new case comes such kind of cross referencing and all that tools are also available you can easily search it out which are the ones available in the market right first one is this then second is important is technology and then comes the online presence those were the days traditionally it used to function where you know 5 7 years ago sin uh, advocate practice we we i have couple of years never seen such kind of you know global presence or i'll say online presence for any particular law firm in fact law firm also you know very uh, obvious it is obvious that they the majority of the times are skeptical in investing into a such you know online presence they see we are not required by you know to do so because we have been getting through our our own network of law firms we get the work according to that so what is requirement of such online presence so you need to understand your audience why it is required right so you you can recollect that i referred you in the initial my session or beginning that we call it is as a professional entrepreneurship right so these are the fundamental principles when any company you know launches the marketing mix for the product know your clients know your customers similar way it is important for you as a professional lawyer practitioner to understand know your market know your client so what i meant knowing your client as your potential client is comes from which background which area which generations millennials younger generations right 65% of the india's population is in which category is the youngest right that doesn't mean that all your client will be into this category but the way that the industry and the business functions across the globe it's drastically changing and somewhere around the technology has a vital role to play in your day to day affairs and at the same time your operation at large of your firm right so build your website but keep in mind marketing is prohibited by ethics of a bar council and under code of ethics right 
so you have to make sure it is not in a technology or the platform which you know against the pro ethics of a required by advocates to undergo in the bar council rules so can simply have a normal website with a decent all the uh, combinations within place which can easily give out the informations about your firm which categories which expertise which fields you are expert, uh, practicing into and what are the areas where you hold expertise your so and through your services how clients can help so you can have a case studies on your websites without disclosing the client name or the industry name you can have such kind of case studies you can offer your commentaries on the recent laws which passed by parliaments or various laws and pronouncements or the even judgments of the uh, high court and honorable supreme courts so these are the your biggest asset knowledge pools so the more and more you are reachable to the public with your knowledge and skill set it will indirectly give your message to the clients prospective clients yeah i have seen on a website that this guy is also doing corporate law this guy is also doing into litigation services but unless you have your presence how and what means they will come to know that what you are into and what you operate yeah you can go reach out to them just you know and directly say that yes i do this i do this it's not going to work right so the online presence is important making just a website does not mean that you will be landed up into a visitor and the client right so understand little bit about how to bring the visitors to your site and the target audience understand the how the google works how the seo works search engine optimizations and how your website can be placed in a a ranking in your areas where you operate or in a field that you want to operate so that if anybody searches you know you have to think like how my clients potential client going to think if i am sitting in a bombay i require some one lawyer i'm struggling with my tax cases in a high court i want to hire one counsel for appearing before the high court on my court what will i do either i will just call my friends do you have any connect of a lawyers or i'll just google it out right so just type in a google tax lawyers in bombay tax lawyers in india which are the forms they are coming it why these forms are coming in? you need to ask the question why only this 10 forms are listing down there are so many forms but why only this 10 forms are there so you will then you will understand on what parameters and principles the google operates how the search engine optimization works and how the same kind of you know the techniques and the technology you can inbuilt in your form and you can help your increase your form's presence to a better right but always keep in mind it should not tend to amount to a marketing or advertisement we are allowed to do a professional a public relationship but with a strong abide by ethics and guidelines right so this is brought about form setup curly right we you have a structuring is done your website is done amazing you just hired a technology guy to assist you something you know to build a strong uh, presence over online now how do i start begin with so first and most important is mindset mindset of a uh, when when you are dealing with any new cases or when you enter into this profession don't think i i am a just new beginner so i am going to charge lesser than the what my big competitors peers are charging so definitely as a cost competitive the client is going to come if this is your strategy then i am sure you will be able to succeed in terms of revenue in terms of clients but it will be difficult and hard to make your presence as a stalwart or as a expert in a particular field because the client who reach out to you or migrate to you because of a cost as a factor then he might go somebody to else you know in future years if somebody else is offering a lower cost lower service fee as compared to you so don't do it in this way be it expert become an expert provide a quality services with a proper integrity and accountability and the charge the fair remuneration what you deserve so you need to know what is your true remuneration right so how do you do that you need to assess your market so if a lawyer in your market for particular case if a big firm is charging x rupees 
if a mid form is charging y rupees if a small form is charging z rupees you need to do not down how how these prices are differentiating 100 rupees 300 and 500 why there is so much difference of this price charging there might be something which big firms are offering which might be missing out by a small firms right so you need to understand then then you need to think what is your cost and how much i should charge so that i can you know consider my profit element right you remember we 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 we, we covered that Uh, revenue and the cost analysis as well what that is important for your firm so these are the things which is important i have seen a lot of couple of times uh, lawyers uh, uh, nothing wrong or uh, wrong against that with due respect those who are into young practice in uh, any state or city they always have a mindset ki lot of quantum of cases we need, we need to pick up and uh, we can charge a less amount of fees so that you know uh, will be in a better position to take them but once you set up your image in the prospective clients as a consider as a cost lesser cost advocates then believe me a case a time will come when the same client if he is needing a expert services with a having a deep pocket such a future course of time he won't come back to you because what comes in his mind when his first things not as a expert he says okay yeah i connected to that guy because uh, i got a quote from two uh, two separate advocate firms one offered me solution at 100 they were uh, expertise in this particular field and one young fellow offered me a quote of just 60 rupees you know so i just gave him because i wanted to get it done because quality is not going to uh, that was that point of time was not paramount to, for me but in future years you have not set the image of yourself while doing such work as a expertise expert in nature while doing such work that doesn't mean you are you should not charge a lesser fees than what your peers are charging it's up to you based on your own internal analysis and cost factors and other various factors you are free to devise your strategy for revenue charging to your clients but don't charge in a way that it puts you in a situations where people clients know know you for a cheaper price services rather than a quality services there is a always center of line between cheaper services and the quality services quality with the best cost yes it is the best solution that is what should be our aim we should provide the best quality service but with the best cost right for that you need to do a lot of market research how the big 20 firms in india law law firms is providing the services how they are structured how their structures what prices they are charging how they are approaching the clients and what is the revenue model then the take out the mid size firms how the mid size firms model is different from the big firms and then comes the small firm small firm might not be having a plan in such they might be having you know uh, their own way of working arbitrary way of charging things and fees and such way for one particular client they are charging ad of 1 lakh rupees for one particular client 50000 there might not be a any logic or base behind charging of such things so you need to understand your market understand your peers what they are doing it how they are succeeding and what they have done it in the past so that they have become so big right it could be anything you know your is that we your sir nomen chandas tsk legal analyze their model of operating how their model sopranti works you know how they are structured how the corporate governance in place so that will enable you to assess how and what means i want my firm to grow right correct so one good question uh, can we can one set up a llp with one advocates and one non advocates non qualified llp the non advocate handling non legal matters so bar council of india prohibits to have a such uh, firm structuring of such firm all partners should be advocate right then most important is various other professional bodies like chartered accountant company secretaries actuarial they allows the partnership with a non uh, practicing of the same same bodies like chartered accountant can do a partnership with lawyer ca can do partnership with the cs similar way llb as well but to an extent as per my knowledge though i am not practicing an advocate but to in my extent non limited extent of uh, bar council ethics such kind of similar provisions are not there in the bar council Is. so do uh, some other professions allows you know ca with a lawyer to have a partnership but law firm does not allow yes you can have a strategic alliance in place 
that is i will take it out at the end of the session to give you a little bit you know insights about globalization for you all one question is that the uh, does having a social networking accounts like a facebook twitter and instagram linkedin help us to get good clients see first and most important thing is marketing is prohibited but nothing stops you to give us sharing your knowledge your content content as in your analysis of any situations in hand and not or uh, directly approaching a client but when the client approach you yes it is allowed unless you are doing advertisement on your social media platform regarding your social network account whether helps you or not so definitely i will say it does not directly help you but yes indirectly it, it makes lot of difference to you linkedin being a, one of the can we establish a private limited company which provides a legal service by hiring advocates and join the same company sky is there are two aspect over here over here is you can practice a profession uh, by having a sanad sanad second thing is without having a sanad you can also practice but not before the court but since you hold a law degree you can function it as a advisor consultancy services you know which is not uh which cannot be compared with the uh, practicing before the high courts or the supreme courts or representation before the authorities right so what does that that's a paralegal sort of it you know, documentation drafting advisory such kind of services you can have it but when you open a private limited company you cannot position yourself as a law firm that should be keep in mind you can portray as is a only advisor firm xyz advisors private limited you cannot call your your firm as a legal advisor or a lawyer firm as a fresher can i start my own firm yes you can start your own firm there is nothing in the rule that prohibits you that you know you, you need to have so many years of experience and only you can settle is the questions which are which have been uh, raised till now and uh, which are relevant in nature have been answered we covered the vision aspect which is most important the foundation of any any firm then we covered the structure what structure you should operate then we covered the how do we create our presence you know or by just setting up a office is not going to work for you you know you need to create your presence so uh, your online presence use of technology infrastructure in your premises in your office and day to day operations that going to help you to ease out your business operations right then some important fundamentals principle to understand that revenues cost keep in mind while doing it if you don't do that then we have a renowned case in 2012 way back the world's renowned global law firm been declared as insolvent and they filed the bankruptcy we'll more about if i'm not mistaken 300 million dollar debt was then that's mounting day by day so yes careful planning entrepreneurship planning is required which is nothing but you know your cost you know your revenue you know the means of achieving the revenue then your proper your positioning and the marketing mix you can't do marketing but you do a public relationship lot of in what terms you know in how you do that so public relations how do you engage yourself you know many times we see big law firms are being seen as a banners on very uh, renowned you know summit law summit or economic summit so as a beginner it will be difficult for you to you know towards uh, contained uh, knowledge partner of any such big event but you can learn from them and slowly steadily you can also implement in a way so networking networking is a key to any business business is all about how you network within your community and within the within the, with the industry peers right so in order to position yourself as a expert for a one particular field if you decide that i am going to let it for corporate at the corporate law practice or banking and insurance and the financial practice you need to figure it out what are the associations of the chambers are in place where you can network with industry prof industry uh, industrialist corporate and as well as the fellow advocate professionals so there are like uh, in maharashtra like uh, rara practitioner association then we can have a tax consultant association arbitration association something like that wherein you know all the lawyers and practitioners so you you know you will have a flexibility to connect with the fellow seniors and 
practitioners within your industry and at the same time your fellow professionals those who are operating in our different cities they will come to know about your presence and when it's is out to you and when you trying to connect and it works out you will never know that it results into your direct business also so without being having a direct intention when you go in any networking event or when you approach any somebody don't even a mindset that it has to be resulted into a client that that is should be a by product first your intention should be to build a relationship and a network your fundamental principle should be that unless you have a relationship and networking then you just putting in yourself into a first priority interest as a client relationship then it is not going to sustain for a longer term right your intention should be to create a, your institution not just this form which lasts for you know 5 years or 10 years something like that. we have seen form which are in existence since last you know uh, not just decade but you know more than 50 years or a century old form so how they have been built as it has been built with the strong principles and the network principles brought in mind yes quality and the scalability is comes into picture definitely without which one can never sustain in the industry so long right so we need to understand this the whatever the effort that you have put in in your study time more than five times of the what effort you have done it in an academic is required for your setting up your farm if you are willing to do that then rest of your life will be far more in a better position than those who are into your service job it doesn't mean that they can should not go into a service of a law practice law firm but definitely here you are acting as a professional entrepreneur you are bearing the risk capacity you are taking a risk of setting up you are putting in your cost energy resource and that's how you are going to be rewarded the highest as compared to the uh, the those who are in which job sky is the limit for you right. so build a good relationship hang out among the persons who you aspire to become you know so always keep in mind this if you if you if your your vision is to be a india's best corporate lawyer then don't be among the lawyers who are not even in line with such vision right that does not mean we are disregarding or disrespectful towards them but that networking is not going to help you to reach to your goal right so choose your circle very well our parents often lee say is to us you know when we child so school or college mein hum jaate hain tabhi surrounding with a surround with the good for fellow friends is the most important because when we are into you know with uh, friends of which which are not sharing the good vibes or they come with a negative mindsets is going to hinder you in in your path of success right so keep in mind that that definitely you cannot easily directly reach out to such big firm which you are going to aspire to be but there are ways and means which you can learn from them you can take the guidance senior guidance and you can analyze how they are implemented such kind of systems in their form and you can implement it will be anything right internship with such kind of chambers where you know you see okay the that sir is a stalwart in the industry and i want to aspire to be like his form you will approach them for some period of you know 6 month or 1 years as a internship you learn them and while doing such don't confine your limit to just the what the work has been given to you always keep it ready for asking the questions why why is it so why we have built only this much amount why this much time is going to take why the work is been doing in this way what kind of arrangement we are having paper work and all that so this is going to help you a lot while setting up your form okay so this 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 is nothing but understand your peers what they are into and be among the circles of fraternity where you do whom like you want to be or aspire to be right then comes a proper documentation methodology to be in place right what do you mean by quality you know the quality is always like it doesn't comes like a overnight lot of times a uh, startup says you know when we become a big we will implement such systems quality procedures it cannot be in this way you know when you want to become a, a successful law practitioners in the future and you want to build like a big competitive 
law firm right you need to have quality principles standard principles from the day first day even the nobody is seeing you so the when you call it as i am a quality practitioner when nobody is seeing you and judging you but still you are adhering to the quality principles and protocol that time you can say yes we are there to quality this helps you to make your foundation strong and lead to your success path right it could not be in this way like you know i am just beginner i am just practicing setting up my practice so initial few years i am not going to get into you know sort of proper documentation and systems like client engagement letter client acceptance client agreements when any big work comes as a you know long term in nature often we as a professional we requires to have a client engagement and the agreement in place so many times a small practitioner says i don't have staff to cater to the needs of such documentation and all so i am eliminating this it doesn't make sense for me you know i'll just mail the quotation and my fees client has agreed that's done no that's not the case what if there is a dispute between client and you then you don't have to you don't have anything to demonstrate what were the agreed upon the procedures right such so big firms big law firms when you go to the big law firms they have such documentation in place so it is not like that the such documentation and the quality procedures are applicable to big and not applicable to small it is just about the mindset and how you want to do it right so i'm again repeating the all the documentation quality procedures is vital to the firm because agar hum abhi nahi kar rahe setup ke time pe then i am sure when you grow big and when you be successful after few years you will never have a you know instinct or willingness to implement at a later date so it has to come from a first first day itself then only you will slowly steadily gradually you will change it or recorrect it as and when it requires based on learning from your past experience and then you emerge out as a good quality service provider right you might be doing some mistakes or maybe wrong in some applying some case cases in your while interacting with your clients or you know doing any professional work but that doesn't mean that you know you are not going to recorrect it you have to learn from the same and you have to apply it for it now the setup is done your online presence is done your little bit content based marketing is done networking is most required you need to be among the market public then only you will able to you know the reach out the potential clients right that doesn't mean now oftenly you will go for you know just uh, in casually just all the functions and marriage function and all that family function casual functions you going to pitch the clients no, it's going to work work like this way professional networking is healthy for professional practice and it is vital also be it a top most industry law firm they are they are also a part of it i have seen them also in you know, a frequently visiting in you know, various chambers and comic con commerce seminars and conferences what is the need for them after so many years of you know such uh, setup and experience and name and fame what is the need for them constant continuous uh, connection with a potential client is most important it is not a one time process communication with the existing client and the potential clients 360 solution is the most important it has to be ongoing process for that definitely in the initial years you are the only one that is all going to be done by yourself but sooner or later you need to create a team why it is so so if you want to aspire like a big law firm and make a big giant institution then everything cannot be done by you you know jack of all you know i will do marketing i will do reach out to my potential client i will sit and i will draft the case also i will appear in the court also and then i will look after my hr employees also and then i will look after my accounting also it's not going to work you need to segregate the function do what you best and rest i cannot i will not say outsource it but i will say try to have a partners of such nature who are going to complement you you know a one lawyer partner who 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 is expertise in technology field you he can be you know interested with the technology related operations of your firm one partner who is from commerce background and who is um, having law practice and who is interested into tax you can make him interested with the powers of related to your all accounting related and all the operations finance management 
right so this is what most important is to segregation of duties because when you want to make a big institution you want you have to grow like a pyramid right because if you are alone and you have just 24 hours as a practitioner if you are very good enough you are hard working i don't recommend to work more than 8 hours 10 hours but if you say yeah i can work 14 hours a day in the initial years but still it's a 14 hours right a good person is who knows how to create this 14 hours into 140 hours how it is we have just 24 hours how is that possible to make it 140 hours so you need to have pyramid in place you you being a founder and being a principal partner you need to create your team in such a way that you're slowly slowly the entire system ecosystem of your firm works for you right how do you do that in the initial you will not employ immediately all the employees and the interns but as in when time permits you need to create your system in such a way that you need to have your system similar to big law firm in india interns associates senior associates a manager or senior manager or director associate director partner and managing partner so this is how you plan it if you want to aspire to become them learn from them learn from them and you apply your own methodologies how to uh, tackle to the situation and how do you want to progress in your own way right you cannot replicate the what they, they are doing it they might have done it with their own uh, requirement means and means right but definitely when you we, we have a ready made system in place we can learn from them right so documentation is important second aspect of it what we have covered so far documentation is important the quality services no compromise to the quality and third and most important is segregation of duty make your form in such a level that over a period of time you are seeing like yes i want to have a 500 strain with this different different fields of a partner in place initially i might be doing all this cases corporate law banking law or i might be into uh, litigation also but slowly slowly when the work comes you need to have smartly to uh, decentralize the entire operation and you have to integrate it now the most important is initially uh, i have told you guys that don't confine your limit you know which whichever city or state you operate don't confine your limit to any particular field or any particular location be it bombay or be it delhi or gujarat whichever state you operate your aim should be i want to provide my services of a legal profession sorry across the globe how it can be possible sure thanks so now important aspect is going global it's a common fundamental principle like you know like just entrepreneurship so when the market is already saturated operating in that market it's difficult right to uh, create position for yourself you know so definitely we will reach out to a market where you have a better wide opportunity or a less competitors you know just take a example operating in a delhi or mumbai or in some other part of a city as a initial practitioner it will take much of your time to you know to uh, to set your presence how about thinking as a practicing as a international advisor or international drafting consultant to a big corporates acting as you know assisting them in our drafting cross border advisory so and our advisory services covenants lot of contractual agreements though there are set of forms but there are very few right so it will take a time definitely if you operate in a local area the client will come immediately you know in a few months or few few days but magnitude of revenue that plus the sustainability is also most important you know you face a lot of competition through your competing peers right so how do you differentiate yourself so you make a global vision like my firm is aspire to become a global consulting and legal firm law firm you know there, there are very, very few indian law firms those are on a global footprint also but to keep in mind having a indian law degree does not mean you can practice in a foreign countries also right court of law but yes there are foreign country who recognize the indian law degree which might not be aware about you that you know whether you can do a services provide the services to that country's client or not but there are a concept called foreign law practices 
which I want to put specific importance to. So especially the Singapore and the UK as well, uh, we all are aware over that many Indian advocates are solicited from you know, England and Wales. They are practicing in the England um, court as well. Uh, we have a couple of times we have seen they are pleading in before the International Court of Justice also. So how do you do that? I am also a lawyer, so I also want to be reached to that level. So here, important is vision. If you vision, this thing is not important for you. Right? If you want to be in local, that's fine. But nothing wrong in you know, seeing a bigger picture. Right? So now you have decided, Let's. I am open for all because I, I can take a new challenge. I can advise to my foreign clients also. No, no, no. I am not at all worried in that. I'm ready for take up a new challenge. So you need to see what are the legal regulatory requirements of the respective country in order to operate in such country, whether such country allows you to operate or not. That is most important. Second aspect, how do I cater to the needs of that foreign country clients by sitting in India? Language problem, cultural issue, and at the same time, knowledge of a local market. When we are setting up in India, we don't have a uh, no knowledge about our Indian market. Then how do I market? Uh, have a knowledge of that my Singapore law market or the UK law practice market, right? So for that, networking helps you in a better way. Reach out to a foreign law firm situated in that country, then try to create or build a relationship with them. Keep in mind, partnership with a foreign law firm is prohibited under the bar council rules. They can't refer the client, and you can't pay the referral fees. It's being strictly prohibited. The clients of the foreign law firm has to strictly approach to your firm. So that we call it as a strategic alliance. You can have a strategic alliance in the place, which enables you to technical know-how sharing. You can share them an Indian related, law related technical know-how to them. They can share with you the, their respective country's technical know-how. And at the end of the day, you will be in a better footfall when you reach out to potential client, you can tell them, we have a partners, we have an affiliation, we have chambers, law chambers, which are operating not just in India, but in different countries and so on. Funnily, we have seen when any foreign company comes to India, take an example of a defense agreement. When it is a government to government, intergovernment contract, Rafal or JET or some other contracts, Russian government, so the France government, there are explicit mandatory requirements by Indian governments to have procurement of such raw materials or the products from India. This is such a big contract, right? So might be such foreign company, government company or the foreign company, they are going to procure the products or the get it manufactured from locally. So definitely they are going to have an agreement in place. Definitely they are going to have some documentation in place. Who prepares such documents? Is it the Russian lawyer, is it the French lawyer or the Indian lawyer? It requires the collaborative approach, not just to one Indian lawyer. Or the France law, but together, because here the lot of arbitration clause, the international uh, clauses are required, and the careful analysis of the both the countries' legalities needs to be there while uh, drafting a documents. Right. So both the countries' lawyer plays a vital role in such kind of agreement. I'm not saying just by opening up your uh, firm's door to a foreign, will be landed up in having such a big assignment unless one has a prior experience or expertise. Or technical skill and bandwidth, they won't be able to, uh, you know, do that do the services. But at least you should be aware about that. Such kind of avenues are areas are there where you can explore these areas, and you can make yourself, you know, open to the global field, which includes in a corporate like so corporate advisory, than uh, banking and financial advisory, tax advisory, international structuring, estate planning, international estate planning will planning will writing and will uh, documentations so the, these are the very few that i have i'm giving you as an example which can be into explored as an option of international global law firm but there is nothing that which we call it as a global law firm there is no designation as a global law firm and there is no international body which gives you a right to operate in any country it's a country by country which regulates the uh, law law practice professions so you need to adhere to each and every country's rule while operating. But nothing stops you from doing networking, 
by various means and ways which are permissible under the bar council right as i pointed out earlier the just example in my case is this and the second one is uh, i would like to stress again on that uh, competition you know when we operate how do you differentiate yourself from you know while operating in the market so just take an example when you are operating as a small and medium practitioners as a law firm you are nothing different you know you are doing what others are doing it correct your your all the clients your potential clients they will see instead of going to you why should not i am approaching to a mid sized law firm those who are in existence for 10 years so you need to very well carefully craft your you know vision and you know lay down your foundation and portray your image in such a way from the first day do we are just a beginner but we aspire to be a global law firm we have a visionary mindset we have a technical skill set today i might not be having employees i just be having two or three but today's our skill set and the deliverability are up to the mark of a global law firm right so your your attitude towards the potential clients and the works on hand it should clearly demonstrate what you are up to the mark right and now coming over to the what are the opportunities you know whether it can be feasible or not or not it's a separate aspect but whether there are opportunity exist or not so i will say to all my fellow participants and advocates and uh, students please do your little homework about india's role in a global economics right so when when we are uh, you know when we say global law practice global law practice largely by and large consist of corporate civil civil practices not as a criminal practice criminal practice though it is governed by country to country but corporate practice and the civil practice have a dual role in a global law practice because each and every country common country we go there are nexus of you know which each other with the globalization either one in country one investor from one country invest into other so what requires shareholders agreement setting up advisory what requires then when they sell out the share again advisory share transfer agreement tax advisory fama advisory exchange control advisory right there are fdi norms odi norms how do we prepare joint venture collaborative agreements technical know how agreements trademark intellectual there are so many fields that you 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 take uh, you know cater to which uh, which act as a wide frame of you know global law practice rather than just uh, confined to domestic whether there is a need or not i will say yes evergreen field because in a indian market the market is a saturated where there are already 100 sorry 100 advocates are practicing and you jump to practice the same area unless you are unique to them you you will be at par with them right and your competitors peers are will be having a upper edge over you because you are a beginner they have already the set well established form so you need to have your foundation strong your vision strong and at the same time tap the unlock opportunity so whatever opportunity you might be seeing don't think so that you know somebody from uk is investing in india i am not knowing uk law so how do i do that or whether whether i will be what what if i will be go wrong when that don't afraid afraid don't afraid to fail if i fail i will be you know rise up again but if you never fail then you will never know the how to survive out of such situations right do some research about uh, how many foreign companies are operating in india how many indian companies are investing into foreign what are the indian firms that caters to the needs of a global practices what are the foreign firms they they law they send their lawyers to india while doing such kind of you know foreign businesses foreign company often comes with a foreign lawyers when they are doing some business deals with the indian right indian companies so who are they how they operate and how do i tap such opportunities so again networking networking with the foreign lawyers uh, then equipping yourself with a foreign law there are se several post graduation course after llb llm in international arbitration llm in international tax then uh, jd courses in american bar council like which helps you to or which equips you to the localize legal environment as well how they operate how their culture is and how the system works in that respective country right having said that i will always say 
go global but have your roots in india don't forget that so whatever we do it has to be with a vision and mindset and ideology to make our country flourish it should not be in this way that you know if if we are i started my indian practice and i am flourishing now other countries i will shut down my india and i will go back this should not be our vision we have to grow ourselves our firm and at the same time with our country also what were the hardships faced by you when you started your global practice of first and most important i have always encountered the same problem again and again one is aapne to just abhi set kiya hai you know you are thinking too like too big you are say you are saying like you know you are going to become a like you know big four i don't want to name any firm your aspiration is to be like this but pehle yeah baal white kar le 10 years of 15 years of experience kar dena thing is going to work out in this way you know it takes time you know hum nahi kar sakte they are big giant we can't even compete people think say say in this way like you know and i over a period of i learned one thing we we need to stay away from such negative people positive and optimistic but careful planning i'm not saying every time you you have to be risk averse and positive you need to prepare for the worst but you need to be positive while doing your business or your professional practice right so that keeps you motivating irrespective of whatever you know uh, areas where you are falling it and difficult situation you arise it so i have always learned that do whatever you want to do listen others but if that is going to bother you in you know hindering your growth success then neglect them be around among the those professionals or the those industrialist or those uh, networking events where you see a positive vibes wahan jao jahan tum unke jaisa banna chahte ho wahan mat jao jahan tum nahi banna chahte ho in a recent uh, farewell ceremony of a high court judge i recollect and i could justice rightly said that to young fellow lawyers while learning from a fellow seniors lawyers hang outing and taking experience from that don't sit with them in a bar sit them in a chamber sit with them in a chamber it's not good to hang out with them in a bar you hang out with them in a chamber to learn amount the right amount so you know your you know your limits your area, line of control, that you know, control where to go and how to go and definitely this will going to have a lot of positive impact on not just on you but entire your office colleagues teams and then your partners also your vision should be you know uh, implemented in a minute aspect only when when your employees and your teammates and your client also knows what you are and what you want to be so they will understand what level you you are up to this is one aspect second is finance we 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 one should not never neglect that that everybody comes from a, you know when we start a practice we all need to struggle a lot be it infrastructure be it you know taking a subscription of a law journals and all that also is a painful i can understand because it comes with a lakhs of th- thousands of rupees and even ranges into a lakhs also then office staffs then creating a technology platform like softwares and all that then your you know basic office admin expense that together is nothing but you know is a you need to invest into a capital expenditure but i can see if you are sustaining your capital expenditure and revenue expenditure for 3 years chanakya's basic principle that is 36 month if you have bleeding capacity for 36 month no matter whatever goes on the toss i will not close down my firm even if i don't get my business for 36 month you should have that capacity but don't keep your plans going you know stop your plans going on you continue with your vision and mission and you will realize at the end of a 36 month or 3 years or 4 years whatever some takes 36 months some takes 48 months you will realize your result is in much different way every year assess yourself what i was last year where i am standing this year don't compare your form with a well established 10 years of 25 years form compare only in terms of what deficiency you have so that you can improve it don't be greedy in this way that this this xyz law firm is having you know 2000 employees they are having you know revenues of crores 
I have just made you know eighty thousand, so I will close down and I will go. I will not able to sustain. It took forty five years or fifty years for them, but believe me, if you do a proper methodologies and system in place, it won't take half of the time that they have taken. And this is what the from is. You can take the examples of various other industries, right? What I've known, Airtel and uh, Idea took so many years to. you know including the reliance took so many years to build become a market leader in the telecommunication but jio with a proper careful planning with a better help of a technology they took a few months or the few years to wipe out the entire you know market players right though it is a different industry but you have to learn from the industry players with whether they are not loyal practice or not it's a separate aspect but you can implement in form also